हेलो गाइस आई एम मनदीप एज सो आई एम वर्किंग एज रियक्ट एंड रियक्ट नेटेड डेवलपर इन एन यूएस बेस्ड स्टार्टअप कॉल्ड हायरिंग एक्सप्रेस सो टुडे आई विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट रियक्ट नेटिव्स न्यू आर्किटेक्चर बिफोर लाइक वी गो इनटू रियक्ट नेटिव न्यू आर्किटेक्चर विल बी डीप डाइविंग दैट हाउ लाइक विल बी डीप डाइविंग इन द करंट आर्किटेक्चर एज वेल दैट हाउ डज our os understand javascript uh, and we'll be talking about native ui threads even ja- javascript thread shadow thread and how is the ui rendered in the current architecture then we will be talking about the react native new architecture covering jsi which stands for javascript interface fabric turbo modules and lastly code gen so what is react native so as we know that react native is like javascript framework which uh, for writing uh, natively rendering application for both android and ios now what do i mean by natively rendering application so how react native like uh, we are ri- ri- we will be writing react native uh, application by react native components how these components are getting converted into native views so let's understand that let's understand what's happening under the hood so before i start i want to clear up two points the first point is react uh, native is going to be rendered using the native views like you you can see on the screen we have this react views view text image these are not going to be rendered on a real device so on a real device uh, the uh, the native views we have like view group text view image view for ios we have ui view for text view will be having ui text view this will be rendered on the real device now how it's happening we'll uh, look at uh, further slides and the second point i want to like uh, clear is like javascript is not going to like uh, be compiled in platform language maybe like java or c++ so anybody can answer me why javascript is not like can, uh, compiled into the platform languages so i am thinking that it's just very difficult to yeah to yeah exactly a phone like javascript is like dynamic type language for 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 a phone to translate a dynamically type type language into like strongly type language like example is objective c is like pretty much difficult so then how our os is understanding uh, uh, the javascript what's happening let's understand that so as we know that well we are developing a native app we'll be using like objective c or java but uh, well we are developing like uh, react native app we can pretty much start without writing this objective c or java code unless we are required to like uh, to integrate module like which is not covered by the library so a react native let me show you how does react uh, native app looks like the code base so you can see a react native app uh, consists of two dictionary one is ios dictionary and another is the android dictionary and now this both are like the uh, both are the entry points for each platform and here's where for uh, here's where your code lies all your platform code lies in this like for and for android all your android native code will be lying in this dictionary and for ios it will be lying here and here's where your javascript is bridge to the platform let's go back to the slide so yeah so yeah so whenever you start your application like uh, re- like we will be using these commands like react native run android or run ios respectively so you will start a packager now what does this packager will do yeah yeah so what this when this packager starts up it it will put all your js code into this uh, okay wait a second so yeah so whenever you start your application a packager will start up and this packer packager what it will do it will put all your all your js code into a single file now this file is known as main.bundle.js now all your js code will be bundled in this file and whenever your phone starts up the, the application starts up it will start a main thread known as native ui thread and also it's known as java main thread and uh, and when this thread starts up it it looks for uh, it look for its pla- platform entry like i have shown for android it will look for android folder and uh, for ios it will look for ios folder when it finds its entry point it will start a javascript virtual machine also known as javascript thread and all your bundled js code will be running in this thread all your app logic your company logic will be running on running on this js thread now now we can see we have two different pieces here one is our main thread which is native or ui thread one is the js thread 
now this both are like different languages now how they will going to communicate with each other they cannot talk with each other they cannot directly call each other because both are different languages so with the help of react native bridge these are going to communicate with each other now how does this how how then how the message passing is happening let's see that okay so your javascript that will decide what should be rendered on the screen so it uh, like uh, like let, let, let's take an example i want to draw this so javascript will decide like okay oh, I, i want to render a button so it will it will send a message and this that message should be sent as cli json and and apart from what should be rendered on the screen this message should also state where should be rendered where where, where we are going to render this uh, screen uh, because uh, javascript this native you native or main uh, platform doesn't understand flexbox so shadow thread comes into comes into the picture the shadow thread will like calculate all all, uh, all the width and height and pass 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 in the same message and that will be passed over the bridge like we can see we are passing in button it will pass the cli json you can pass properties if you want to disable a button you can pass and call back and now any interaction happening on the user end the tapping on on scroll will be happening over the main, main thread so you can see that and even that will be sent back as a cli json and nothing is blocking blocking this this is like a asynchronous process uh so now this works great for a normal scenario like uh, i have like a button like i have a screen in a button i tap a button so uh, this uh, native thread will send a cli json that uh, user has tapped uh, tapped a button the callback function will go on, uh, go to the js thread and js thread uh, will whatever we have written the business lo logic or company logic will run that and we will again send as a cli json for a normal scenario it will work great let's let us take example we have like a long list of uh, list now when the when the user try to like uh, continuously scroll so many events are firing now the user will uh, like on scroll event then it will go go as cli json then again it will go to js thread js thread will return a layout and shadow, shadow thread will uh, shadow thread will like give the uh, calculate all the width and height and it will again send back to the native thread now this is this is consuming time so if you are doing react native from quite some time you can notice for flat list we can see a blank screen so now how this has the this are the uh, current problem we are facing in react native current architecture now how this problems are like uh, solved in the new architecture we will be dis discussing uh, later on this so you can see this is how like uh, bangalore traffic same we can have uh, in this yeah so now let's talk about how the ui of a react native app is rendered like in the, in in the current architecture so first of all you will be writing the ui ui of a react native app using Ra react native views you will be having an uh, component tree you will be following the same unidirectional approach which, which is like specific to react you will you will be the communication between these components will be happening by means of uh, properties callbacks if a child elements need something to from the parent element you will be passing a callback function if a uh, parent uh, elements need we can pass in pro properties yeah so when you run your code when 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 you run your code this uh, this javascript will generate an react element tree now this react element tree as you can in see in the screen will be translated into uh, react shadow tree which is which is which is in c++ and this will be used used by the shadow uh, shadow thread that we have talked talked later the shadow thread will use react shadow tree to calculate all the width and height and uh, it will it will generate host view tree now this host view tree will uh, will consist consist of nat all the native views the view group uh, the native views we have so uh, this is how the react native current architecture looks like after uh, combining all the pieces together so let's talk about react native's new architecture so as we have talked about the bridge like uh, everything was happening asynchronous uh, synchronously in new architecture this uh, this react native bridge is like deprecated and it is replaced by jsi now what is the jsi the jsi stands for javascript interface it's like completely written in c++ it's lightweighted and it's general purpose and with the help of jsi now we can call native methods directly from 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 the javascript now before going deep diving to it let's see how the browser is doing 
So if you go to browser, if you go, if you get your, if you check your DOM APIs, document dot any API, you can see. Uh, so you can see a function has been written. Now uh, you can see here it's written as native code. Now what does the browser is doing here? The browser is exposing the OS APIs to the JavaScript. As a similar way, JSI will expose expose all the native method via C++, like uh, JSI is written in C++, all the native methods will be exposed to JavaScript, uh, JavaScript using uh, C++ host objects. Let us take one more example to explain this. Yeah, yeah, uh, this, this will be looking very similar. We have a JavaScript variable and uh, we are creating an element. Now this JavaScript variable is like holding a reference to a DOM variable, DOM element, which was pro probably written in C++. Now any method we call on that container, JavaScript variable, it will turn call the methods in the DOM element. So JSI will work with, with a similar way. Uh, we'll be holding the reference, uh, we, we will be holding direct reference to native method and we can call anytime. So, and uh, from this we can uh, solve our asynchronous uh, issues we had and even uh, JSI is written in C++, we know that power of C++ is insane. Now what is Fabric? Now Fabric is like uh, React Native's new rendering system. Now like, like we, saw, we saw on last slides, we had to like, uh, when the scroll events happen, it, it has to go to Java, uh, serialize that JSON, then again to JavaScript, uh, uh, JavaScript thread, and so much of back and forth was happening and so much time was consuming. Now we have JSI, the native methods are exposed to JavaScript, even the UI methods are exposed uh, to JavaScript. Now we can have uh, this, uh, this JavaScript thread and uh, native thread, uh, we, can, we can make them as sync and we can make some uh, events like on scroll. We had a problem with on scroll uh, because it was asynchronous. Now we can make it as sync, we can prioritize some task so that we don't have any frame drops. Like now we can utilize uh, device, the device power of FPS, turbo modules. Yeah, so if, I, if you are doing uh, React Native from quite some time before, uh, uh, before this auto linking, when we need to integrate any module, we have to like uh, manually initialize it. We had to go to Java class and we have to register its class and all. After auto linking came into the picture, uh, the things were like uh, pretty much good. Then now trouble modules is like the new way of writing APIs. Now all the methods, like with the help of JSI, this Turbo module will also have a direct reference to your native methods. And even this Turbo module is, uh, uh, is used, it's uh, is one more advantage is for lazy loading. So before uh, we had to use any modules like Bluetooth, geolocation, uh, we had to like invoke, invoke that in, in the app starting phase. So what if we, are, if we are not using that uh, geolocation, any model, we have so many models in our app, we are not using it and, and, we, and it's, it's, uh, this all models were invoked at the starting of the app. And because of that, we were facing some, uh, uh, some delay. So what Turbo models will do now, we have direct reference to the native method. So now we can, we can call, we can initialize any model whenever we, we need. Like if you need to initialize Bluetooth model, we, we do not have to like uh, invoke it at the starting phase of the app. We can call it any type we wish. Code gen. So uh, like we know that uh, JSI is, uh, is written in completely in C++ and uh, JavaScript is dynamically typed language. So we have, we should have something that, 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 that ensures there must be a smooth uh, communication between the two. So code, code gen ensures that even uh, code gen, code gen uh, helps like uh, if you want, like uh, if you're doing React Native from quite time, you, like if you want to integrate any native uh, module, you have to, you, ha you, ha you should have the knowledge of uh, all the native platform languages to write a module to integrate it. But now with the help of code gen, you, you, can, uh, you can write uh, your JavaScript or in, or, or in TypeScript, it will generate your, uh, boilerplate for that model. It will not generate the whole native model, it will just generate the boilerplate and it will contain all your uh, majority of uh, things required to create that module. So this is, uh, after all these changes, this new architecture will look like this. So that's all from my side, thank you.